Morelia, Michoacán is an amazing city, but many people have wondered, is it safe to visit? Michoacán is one of the six Mexican states on the travel advisories do not travel list due to crime and kidnapping. Morelia, the state's capital, is a UNESCO World Heritage site full of rich history, incredible architecture, and indigenous culture. We've been here a couple weeks now, so we've got some great tips for you, but we'll of course also talk about whether or not we feel safe here. Let me officially welcome you to the beautiful city of Morelia. We are Jenny and Kevin, two Mexican-Americans from Chicago, traveling throughout Mexico to reconnect with our roots and in search of a new home. So if this is your first time joining us, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so that you can follow us on our journey. We're going to start our day with our favorite snack here in Morelia, and that's the gazpacho from El Huero de la Merced. When I first heard that there were gazpachos everywhere in Morelia, I imagined the Spanish-style tomato cold soup that I had when I studied abroad in Spain. But to my surprise, that it has nothing to do with that. It has the same name. I'm not sure why. If you know, please comment down below. So the gazpacho is a fruit cocktail, and the traditional one comes with small pieces of cube mango, jicama, pineapple. But the surprise comes in in the fact that there's cheese, salt, pepper and valentina sauce. For many people it's the cheese part that's like cheese on fruit is the really weird part but you guys if you haven't tried this before it's amazing. It's a super cool combination of sweet, citrus and salty and spicy flavors. It has everything. Mm. This is the epicenter for Morelia Centro Historico Plaza de Armas, also known as Plaza de los Martires, because this is where Mexican independence heroes were brutally murdered. But aside from that random fact, it's also important to know that this is the main hub for Morelia's many festivals. All around Plaza de Armas are beautiful cafes and restaurants, a few that we've eaten at, and a few that we've just been eyeing all week, like the Spanoli one here. We're gonna be showing you our favorites with of course saving our, the best one for last. But right now I wanna get, switch our attention over to the beautiful Teatro Mariano Matamoros where we visited in previous videos. Check out this clip that we took last night at their inauguration for their 34th annual music festival, Festival de Musica de Morelia, which I believe is mostly classical music, but it's international. They invite people from all over the world. I could go on and on, but we've got a lot to cover today. Other restaurants to note in this area are El Restaurante La Tarasca, where you can find one of Michoacán's most traditional dishes, La Sopa Tarasca. And if you're looking for a great view of Morelia Centro, you can check out the rooftop at El Campanario Cafe. Across the street from Plaza de Armas is my favorite street in all of Morelia. It is Paseo de Hidalgo. And it's my favorite street in all of Morelia, not just because of the beautiful decorations, but because of the restaurants that are here. To my left, you have Cafe Michelana, where you can find some really delicious pastries and coffee. On the right-hand side, we had some delicious enchiladas morelianas at El Tragadero, which we highly recommend. And at the very end is one of Jenny's favorites. It looks a little empty right now, but a few days ago for Dia de Muerto, this was packed with thousands, okay, maybe it's exaggeration, but hundreds of people, and then the big skulls, oh, they were so pretty. It's nice to have it, what feels like, all to ourselves right now. I can see my favorite elote spot already. This is not your regular street corner, street elote, your regular chasca, your regular esquite, elote en vaso, whatever you want to call it, this is on a whole nother level. The reason I think it's on a whole nother level is because they not only have, you know, your elote, the cacascahuitle, ¿cómo se llama? El cascahuitle. That, that one particular one that's the main strain in Mexico, but they also have the yellow corn. And being from Illinois, I just, I love my yellow corn. But the other thing here are the salsas. You've got all kinds from peanuts to sesame seed, garlic, cucumber, chile de albor. Arbanero, chimichurri, all different kinds of salsas. So there's a whole buffet of salsas and different things that you can put in it. My favorite is this one. So let's get one so I can show you what that looks like. So I like a combination of both sweet and spicy. So I'm gonna do a little bit of this pineapple salsa. I also like the cacahuate one, the sesame seed one. But I've got to leave room for my favorite part, which are these totopos, these fried tortilla chips, which are sauteed with chile and sesame seeds. They just make the best topping. They give it that nice crunch. <laughs> Oops. 
I'm done. All that was right. delicious. That went by really fast. <laughs> Elotes are nice and all, but before you leave Morelia, you have to make sure that you try Corundas and Uchepos. So we're gonna head to El Santo Niño because we hear they make the best. Let's go. To try Corundas here in Michoacán, we came to El Santo Niño, and there are two different kinds of Corundas. This is a traditional dish from Michoacán. It looks a lot like a tamal, but they have a very different shape. One is a triangle shape, and the other one's kind of just flat like a tamal. The one on your right here is made with manteca, which is pork lard, and the one on the left is made with ashes. Just kidding. They just kept the name ashes. I don't know why, but they used to be made with ashes, and they just kept the name, so let's try out this Michoacan delicacy. Jenny prepped them with crema and salsa from the house. Mmm. They're both really good, but I like the ashes one better because of the texture, the taste, the crema, the salsa. At Mercado Santo Niño, you can come get a uchepo. This is my first time trying it, and it looks like a tamal. They have two options. They have salty and sweet. Uh, they didn't have any of the salty ones anymore, which come with crema and salsa. But today, we're going to try the sweet one. Oh, yeah, it's like cornbread, but in a tamal, or like sweet cornbread. A visit to Morelia is not complete without at least a quick stop to admire the beautiful Catedral de Morelia. It's Baroque style architecture on pink cantera rosa stone is emblematic of the city and it's one of the reasons why it has the nickname La Ciudad de la Cantera Rosa because this stone you'll see all throughout the historic center and if you're as big of a fan of this pink stone as we are then you'll definitely want to check out these other cities if you haven't already. San Miguel de Allende for its church also made of cantera rosa and one of my favorites La Ciudad de Zacatecas. Zacatecas City I think is one of the prettiest cities made of the pink colonial style stone architecture and this is exactly what that reminds me of. I'm honestly just thinking of how much I love Zacatecas right now. But these churches we like to visit not necessarily because we're super religious but because we can admire the art and the beauty that is inside. So let's go take a quick look inside. Plaza San Agustin is often used as a public space for events, an artisan market, and street food stalls. You'll find some good local food and fun random art. Fun fact, this was formerly a cemetery for religious missionaries known as Agustinos. On the other side of Plaza San Agustin is this really cute alley with cafes, restaurants, and at night it's gorgeously lit up with all those lights. I think it's one of those nice little hidden gems that most people might not know about. So that brings us to the Jardín del Arte de las Rosas, or Jardín de las Rosas as it's known around here. It's not only got, of course, lots of beautiful roses all around the garden, but a lovely fountain. It's a place I love to walk through and come check out the really cool art that they're usually selling and on display. I love how they've circled the entire fountain with all the art. Look at these little dragons and stuff. Wow, and there's some really big ones over here too. This looks like a harp. We did say it was a jardin full of art and a bunch of flowers, right? Look at this beautiful artwork right here. It's all twisted up. I wonder how it got like that. It looks like something out of Guillermo del Toro. <laughs> Trippy, huh? Man, this is a big city. We've been walking around all day. I just wanted to take a moment to sit down and admire what I think is my favorite movie theater in Mexico. <laughs> the Cinepolis here in Morelia is gorgeous both inside and outside. We were here for the film festival and we got to see the uh, Oscar winning director, Barry Jenkins for If Feel Street Could Talk, uh, director for Moonlight. Anyway, I digress. You can always check that video if you're interested. We just wanted to point out what a gorgeous movie theater there is. And then across from the Cinepolis is the University of Michigan. I mean, the University of Michoacan. Speaking of Michigan, I'm wondering if there's any sort of relationship between Michoacan and the state of Michigan. Michigan? Like, Michigan? The reason I think there might be a connection is because of the meaning of each word. Both are derived from indigenous languages, completely different ones that is. The word Michoacan is said to derive from the Nahuatl language and is said to mean place of fish. But it is also said to be derived from the Purepecha word meaning place by the water. But the curious part is that the word Michigan, which is derived from the Ojibwe Native American language, means great or large lake. So if they both have similar meanings and are related to water and they sound the same, Michoacan, Michigan, I don't know, what do you guys think? 
Another must-see in Morelia is the Centro Cultural Clavijero. This cultural center and museum has art exhibits and history of the city of Morelia. And I think this just might be my favorite structure in the city, not just because it's that Cantera Rosa that's beautifully structured, but because it has some cool history. It took 97 years for this palace to be built, and it was initially built as a religious education center back when it was still called Valladolid. It was, the city was then renamed in 1828 to Morelia in honor of Jose Maria Morelos, one of the main heroes of the Mexican independence. This is La Fuente de las Tarascas, three beautiful Tarasca women holding up a basket of fruits and vegetables. But actually this used to be called Fuente de las Indias, or Fountain of the Indian. Which brings up the question, what exactly is a Tarasca and how, does that, how is that different from a purépecha? Soy Tarasco, soy del mero Michoacán. So we've mentioned before that the Purépechas are the indigenous community that are in this region of Michoacán. But the Purépechas are also interchangeably called Tarascos or Tarasca. So what exactly is the difference? You've got Tarasco versus Purépecha. Tarasco is actually a word in the Purépecha language which is used to describe a kinship relationship, like a father-in-law, a son-in-law, or a daughter-in-law. And the use of this word historically comes from when the native kings after having given their daughters off to marry to the colonizers, would refer to their, the Spanish men as Tarascos, meaning like son-in-law. But the Spanish men thought that that was, you know, what they were called. So then they started calling them Tarascos in return. So today you hear both Purépecha and Tarascos used interchangeably. And welcome to Romance Alley. El Callejón del Romance is a great place to come and get a kiss. Mwah. Thank you. They also say that if you lock a little padlock on here, your love will last forever. I don't have a padlock, do you? You think we're gonna be okay? You guys, think, you guys think we'll be okay? I think we'll be okay. Okay, let's go check out this beautiful alley. Let's go. It's so romantic already. It's not just the flowers, but the couples here who just got married. If I could count on my hands the number of couples that I've seen who just got married, I'd need more hands. <laughs> this is a great place to come and get wedding photos. I wanna hold your hand. I'm feeling romantic. I guess even if you're not getting married, it is a nice spot to come and just take a walk, hold hands, look at the flowers, and spot the poem verses. This is not just called Romance Alley because this is where couples come to make out or where newlyweds come take their pictures, but also because there are hidden poem verses like this one that we just found that says, Por el jardín de las rosas, todas las rejas son blandas. Porque estudiantes sin libros fácilmente las apartan. I'm going to have to think about this one a little bit. Any interpretations out there? I'm not very good with poetry. But it sounds romantic. Ooh, we found a rooftop and fountains. More poem verses. Aw, there's this quinceañera we saw earlier. That makes me so nostalgic. Mine was over 10 years ago now, 12, 13 years ago. <laughs> and of course, we're saving the best for last. This is one of the most serene and beautiful places you can visit in Morelia. It's El Calzado Fray Antonio de San Miguel. If you happen to come by on a weekend, you might just get surprised the same way that we were surprised today with this beautiful display of floral carpets that the music festival decided to display from local communities. And this thing is gorgeous. It stretches out really long and check out how beautiful this is. Festival de Musica. How beautiful that it seems like Morelia, Morelia always has a festival. In fact, starting from September 29th all the way through December, you have a festival in the city every single weekend. And the butterflies, of course, are emblematic for Michoacán. It's monarch season. They were, they were on their way, if they haven't already arrived, to the reserves. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. We told you we were gonna save the best for last, right? We're here at our favorite cafe in Panaderia. This place has the best bread and coffee that we've had in Morelia. And we can't wait to show it to you, come on. All right, we've been here probably five or six times already and our favorite thing to get for me is the matcha latte. Kevin likes to get the hot chocolate with pecans, so they're like blended in there, which is really nice. And then they, the, my, our favorite part is when they offer to show you the bread basket, because there's usually an awesome selection of them. 
So today we went for the Concha de Jamaica. You can already tell that I poked it a little bit just to see how soft it is because I was super excited for it. We've never had a Concha de Jamaica before, so we're really excited for this one to see if it really tastes like, like Jamaica or hibiscus flower. Gotta be honest, the Jamaica taste isn't totally there until you get the, a bite of these little, almost like raisins, but hibiscus flower pieces of sweet dried fruit. Once you get a bite of that, then you can taste it. Otherwise, it's just like delicious pastry. It's really good though. Well, that's a wrap. We hope you enjoyed our video here in Morelia, this beautiful art. We wanted to make sure that we finished at this beautiful art. Uh, and we also want to like talk about safety in terms of the time that we've been here. Mm -hmm. So far, I think that it, it's there's some like issues with safety. We might not dig into them too much with a very time like with the short amount of time that we're here. But I think uh, more than anything, it's pretty common you know you got to keep your streets smart you got to make sure that you know you walking around in it's like streets. any any city I don't feel any more unsafe here than I do walking around the streets of Chicago for example so it's it's any place that you want to make sure you watch your things you don't want to leave anything unattended I personally don't feel too comfortable walking around alone especially not at night um, so it's just things like that you don't we haven't seen anything bad happen we've been here for a few weeks and we've felt totally fine here we, in fact we've had some of the best times in the last few weeks and n without incident so even though the news talks a lot about the danger in the state of Michoacan a lot of that is not in Morelia so if you're thinking about visiting Morelia at least and from our experience we can tell you that we felt perfectly fine and had an incredible time here and if you happen to be from the state of Michoacan or have, have visited Michoacan, leave your thoughts below. Like, what do you think in terms of safety? Would you come? I know people who are from here and haven't been back in a long, long time because they're afraid of safety issues, which I totally understand. But like Kevin said, street smarts, not flashing jewelry, you know, regular stuff. Honestly, it's not, not that bad here, it's particularly in Morelia. I wouldn't say the same thing. For about the other areas other areas in the state of michoacan. michoacan has so many beautiful places uh outside of morelia and it varies from place to place mm -hmm. so yeah that's just our take would we live here uh maybe we, we don't know yet i think we gotta dig in deeper and i think getting to know yeah more i love this city especially all the arts and culture here the food oh my oh, god the gastronomy the bread and everything so but so the, yeah. the the say not being totally safe I mean, what part of the world is totally safe, right. but safety is a concern. I think I would have to spend some more time here to really get a real feel for the safety. But as a visitor, as a tourist, I think it felt totally fine. We hope you enjoyed our video. Se cuiden, se bañan, nos vemos hasta la próxima. Ciao. It's El Calzado Antonio's... It's El Calzado Fray Sana... But here's the interesting part. The word Michigan is from the Ojibwa Native American language, which means... What does it mean?